Well, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Um, yeah, so I'm really representing um, here a lab at Courant Institute, and the theme today is NYU in Motion, and we're a motion research lab, actually. And so uh, we're in the Courant Institute, and if you look at motion from a scientific perspective, it um, has been investigated for many, many hundred years in science. And the Courant Institute, which is just like one block down there, uh, is one of the leading institutions um, that sort of comes up with mathematical frameworks and computer simulations for NASA and for global warming and for heart uh, beats and so on. And uh, over the last 10 years, uh, we and the entire community in the world have been pushing this to new extremes. This is actually from a colleague at uh, Stanford University, Ron Fatku and his group, uh, who have been pushing sort of simulations of natural phenomenon, water, cloth, fire, to new heights that um, if you have seen recently a movie and there was a water flood or an explosion, it's most likely simulated by this mathematical equations. Um, uh, like this one here, I don't know how many mathematicians are here, but this is the broad bread and butter at Quran. It's the Navier-Stokes equation, and that really explains in great detail a lot of natural phenomena. So, um, and we can do it in a way now that you cannot tell the difference between computer simulation and the real. But there's one biological system that we haven't fully cracked yet. We call this um, the human, and um, <laughs> People, their, their emotion is based on their genetic buildup, on their cultural background, on their physical training, their family history. And it changes every second based on their mood. And we haven't found the right formula for this yet. But you still see a lot of very realistic motions in the special effects and in gaming. And so what we do instead, and we have several of those systems uh, at the Quran Institute in our Broadway lab, is so-called motion capture. So if you haven't seen motion capture yet, it's, it's maybe a studio like this. We have like 20 cameras or more, and they look at little markers, and then you can track them and have a skeletal reconstruction. We do this with the entire dance world in New York City. We do it with several sports teams, the Yankees, the New York Rangers, and so on. We do it with the medical school. Or like down here, you see two Italians talking to each other. One is from the southern part of Italy with a certain <laughs> body language dialect. And the, the gentleman on the left is from the northern part of Italy with a different body language dialect. And so we are, we're studying all that. So um, just to give you an idea of what we usually do, we sometimes actually leave the lab. And here we drove up a few blocks to uptown New York to this thing called Lincoln Center. Um, there's Juilliard School, um, and we sort of converted one of their studios into a motion capture studio and had the honor of capturing Alan Gilbert, who is the musical director and conductor of the New York Philharmonic. So we put him into a suit, and we wa were like, um, we want to sort of, this is a project with the New York Times. If you read their arts and leisure section last Sunday, or you went uh, to, it's online right now if you go to this web link. Uh, we, we work a lot with the New York Times sort of visualizing motion and uh, I wanna let Alan Gilbert speak himself about, there, there are lots of interviews on the website right now about five different conductors. Uh, people usually don't fully understand what conducting is about. It's like some people say, well you don't need a conductor, you just take a metronome, it's really the musicians. But, but, let, uh, but they, they sort of, the New York Times shed light behind this, this very complex process, the gestures behind it here. One thing that I changed, or I tried anyway to change in my conducting, was the way I was living through the notes myself as they lasted, especially the notes of longer duration. And that actually is what makes a piece like this, this chorale, chorale interesting, because it is it's mostly about long notes, it's not about figuration or technique or, or, or rhythmic patterns. And we experimented with lots of other ways to sort of visualize his signature. Here's another video. Um, it's a bizarre little... And this is um, a faster rhythm and so on. 
And so um, we're not the only one who has a motion capture system. It's all over Hollywood and the gaming industry. These are our colleagues at Motion Analysis Corporation. They turned, uh, if you, the, like Charlie Chaplin's original studio in Hollywood was uh, bought by the Hanson Recording Studio, and they still do sort of like lots of Muppet shows and things. And they're using now like a really huge motion capture system with hundreds of cameras here. So the trends are bigger, more. Uh, also, Vicon, we're using a lot of Vicon systems. We're like put a lot of face markers on it or hand markers to get the subtleties. Here, the face is actually by Quantic Dream. And we're not just stopping on the skin, we want to also go under the skin. We have like dancers doing breathing exercises, like, like the phenomenon is like motion capture itself usually just does the surface. But like when we talk to modern dancers, the most important thing about dance is breathing. If you don't breathe, you're not alive. And so we also get breath, we're gonna get like uh, under the skin EMG. This is with the medical school here for injury prevention and many, many other things. And so uh, the trend right now, we are engineers. We think more is better, more sensors. But if you talk actually to our subjects, like Alan Gilbert, when we put on the suit and we were planning to put on all these markers on his fingers, but we saw when he was rehearsing without the suit, he had this very graceful, I, I can't do it, I shouldn't even move. Like, <laughs> I hope he doesn't see this here right now. Um, but, um, but then when he, he, he was refusing to put on the glove, and then we were like, oh my God, how, 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 gonna, how are we gonna get the fingers out? And we finally convinced him to put like a few little dots on it, but he still was a little market conscious. And uh, so we managed to do, like thanks to Peter Bertzel, who is he, uh, he is sort of the director of special effects here. And you can see it all on the New York Times website. And even in sports, it's even more important. This is uh, just last, yesterday, the New York Times came out with a 3D movie where you can put glasses on and see Mariano Rivera. But we did also the mo motion capture for him. And uh, he would not wear a suit. Like he's the Yankees pitcher. And he only does his very specific signature pitch if he's in the stadium itself. Everything is at stake. So if we would wire him up, he would not do it. But we still get 3D out of it. So basically, the future of motion research is less is better, like less cameras, just one camera in this case, or none, like no markers at all. And so we, we worked really hard to make this marker less. We can do eye gaze without putting markers in the middle of your eye. We can tra track tigers. Uh, usually it's not uh, advised to put markers on this tiger. Uh, we can even go back in time. Like this uh, Edward Maybridge's famous walk cycles over 120 years ago. It's this oldest recording in human motion. We got 3D out. Or we've heard earlier the Bay of Pigs crisis of Kennedy, and we captured him in 3D with these techniques. And if you've seen recent movies like Avatar and others, we have much more natural motion now in the movies. A lot of our techniques made it now into the special effects industry. So what's next? Uh, the next thing is actually to totally scale up and uh, actually go to YouTube to like exploit the explosion of the web and social network. With this markerless techniques, we can now all over the world study certain motion languages of certain politicians. We even can go to conferences and figure out who's giving the most hand wavy talk. And the, the secret thing here now is sort of similar to what humans do. We have to collect lots of lots of example data, lots of training data of like, oh, this is a human like this, this is a human like this, this is a human like this. And that's what humans do when they raise up. They like learn from experience. And so the new trend is actually sort of really, it's in the globalization theme, is we go out there and ask the entire community to help us. And this is in certain areas called crowdsourcing. So a lot of our crowdsourcing uh, here is one early thing. Uh, when, when the New York Times approached us, we have here an entire um, season of baseball. And we had a sort of a technique. It's sort of like the, you, you've probably seen the movie Moneyball. And nowadays, we want to like collect everything. This is the second version of Moneyball. 
And go to this website here, and you see when you wear glasses now, you can actually see in 3D all this stuff. But the new trend here is, uh, what is this crowdsourcing? You've heard about it. You're going to ask the entire internet to help you. And we uh, where's Graham Taylor here behind? Um, uh, he was, um, uh, he's our uh, artificial intelligence expert, and he worked with a, a hip hop band in Holland, Simon Chipsy, who did this crowdsourcing experiment where they asked all their hundreds or it's, how many was it, 100,000 or more than 100,000 fans? It was sort of a web game, and you could sort of, if you post like them, you get included in their video. And they were generous enough to give us all this training data, and Graham could like build one of the best post recognition systems based on this with the help of the hip hop fans. And then also, we're not stopping just asking them for help. We can also crowd capture analytics. We can figure out what an entire crowd here doing a basketball game is doing, uh, like Team A fans versus Team B fans. And then, since we're asking the entire world, we also want to ask now you, this lovely crowd here to help us with motion capture and this is so-called crowd gaming so there's massive multiplayer online gaming where everybody's locked in their bedroom and plays with it but we sort of want to bring back that you're not staying with your webcam or with your Kinect in your own bedroom you're like all in the same room and we have you now here all in the same room and we're going to do an experiment right now in the next um, 10 minutes with you uh, using a very sophisticated motion capture system here, one camera. And I'm going to ask uh, Andrea on stage. And uh, if we can get the screen down and the projector on, um, yes. And be ready. Uh, you're now the subject, and you're going to help us. You all will be motion captured now. <laughs> so um, over to Andrea. OK. All right, good afternoon. Um, just while we're setting up, I'll introduce you to Wally. If you remember the movie Wally, we think we've affectionately named our camera <laughs> and lights Wally because they kind of looked like him. Um, so these are two infrared lights with a with a motion capture or with a camera. So this is where the motion capture is happening, and we're going to start right now in raw mode. Um, this means that we have high exposure. You can all see yourselves. You can wave hi, hello. All right, so. <laughs> Good job, you guys are good at this. Um, so the next thing is to bring in a ball and show Wally something that he can eventually track. So we're going to bring in a squid ball, yep. Just one. And it, oh dear, don't throw. <laughs> Try not to launch, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so let's just grab onto the squid ball and hold it. Can somebody hold the squid ball? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a really lively experiment. <laughs> All right, so can everybody see? Uh, we've lowered the exposure. Wally is focusing in on our bright uh, squid ball right here. Um, and we can maybe all stand up. And there are three rules we need to follow. Rule number one, no flashes, please, so that Wally can just see the ball. Rule number two, please avoid all the expensive equipment in the room. Do not hit the, those things with the ball. And number three, hands, gentle hands only, yes. So let's start by tracking the ball. We're gonna just see the movement of the ball. So pass it around, yep, you can pass it. Let's go to the right, yep, all right. Let's pass it over to your, I guess your right, very good. Oop. <laughs> And back into the center. We can go back a little bit. Control, we need crowd organization here. Community control, excellent. All right, we've got it going up. We good? All right, so our first game we're gonna play, let's say stop the ball. Stop, ooh, nice. All right. The first game we're going to be playing is called Reveal. So you guys get to guess what the image is behind the black screen. And you're, of course, going to be able to reveal that image by moving our ball around. If you see the image and you get it, scream it out. They start out pretty easy, but they'll get a little harder. So let's give it a try. Let's go. Do we have an image? Oh! Heads up. <laughs> Okay, let's see about this one. Hmm. Do 
you want to sit down? All right. <laughs> Good work, guys. Let's see what's coming up. Oh, heads up. This is a tricky one. Think abstract, think art, think heads up. Whoa, yeah, Andy Warhol, well done. Smart crowd, obviously. Oh, well, hmm, what could this be? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We are on to a sporting, yes. <laughs> Babe Ruth, very good. Oh, here's a tricky one. We've heard about this one so far. Oh, yes, very good. Very good, excellent. Oh, this is a toughie. Who could this be? Yeah, all right, guys. <laughs> well done. Okay, a little bit more difficult. Hmm, you guys have to push it around a bit more. Maybe go to the back, to the front, back into the middle. We're going to lose our screen here. Oh, hmm. Oh, Air France, the Concorde. Good try. <laughs> oh, another famous NYU alumnus, I believe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't have given away that clue. <laughs> Ah, another tricky one. This one is for all the extra scientific people out there. Hmm. Yeah? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I got this one. Stand up, I lied, literary, sorry. <laughs> all right, let's do a couple more images. This one's for scientific people out there, sci-fi. Into the middle, guys, will help, I think, on this one. Yep, a little more. Down, yep. Oh, can we figure it out? Yeah, we gotta go back a little bit, maybe. Yeah, maybe slow. Oh, heads up. Hal. Hal was tricky. One more image. One more image, this is it. For this game, let's see. Oh. Homer, all right. Well done, guys. Now, do you want to take this one out, or? Uh, let's try with this one, huh? Okay. All right, the next game. Oh, you're all sitting down. Are you tired? It's, it's tiring. All right, the next game we're going to play, folks, is called Yours. This is a game that um, has one really easy rule. You're going to keep the balls off your side of the court. So the divider line, we'll say, is right about here, and we'll practice a little to make sure. Here's one side, here's the other. You probably are gonna wanna stand up for this again. And uh, we'll start with this ball. So let's just slowly bounce this ball around so you can see back and forth over the line. We see where the two teams are. There's the blue team, here's the red team. Everybody see what's happening on the screen? Okay. Shall we add in a few more balls just to get things going a bit? Yep, just a couple more balls, guys. All right. Okay. All right. Everybody understands the concept? All right, let's stop for a second. And stop. Excellent. Take out squid ball. We're going to get you ready with just the little balls because they're easier to handle <laughs> in this game. All right, everybody now understands what's going on, right? You want to keep all your balls off your side. Easy as that. Here come extra balls. Let's put the, some more balls in, guys, so that our teams have some extra things to play with. Hold on to them. Hold on. We're not starting yet. Stop. Oh, and chaos breaks out. All right, hold your balls, people. Excellent. All right, are we ready? Do we have even numbers on both sides? Let's keep it as it is. There's a guy standing like in the middle. Are you playing on both sides? <laughs> there we go. All right, are we ready on the count of three? You're keeping the balls off your side. One, two, 
three and go. All right. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, Blue, you are in the lead, Blue. Oh, dear. Blue is dominating the game. Oh, oh, maybe red, and we've got about 15 seconds, guys. Who's going to win it? Oh, and red is taking over. Red is now in the lead. Oh, five seconds. Oh, red wins. Woo! All right, let's hold and have one more game, and then I feel like you guys are going to be tired because, wow, you are a good crowd. All right, get your balls on both sides. No cheating. <laughs> Evenly divided now. And go! Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. The cloud buster is out. <laughs> the hamster has <laughs> entered. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's see who's winning. We've got blue in the lead. Red seems to be stalled. 15 seconds to go. <laughs> Blue's gonna win this one. Whoa. Blue, you got it. Oh, Blue, woo! I think that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for your participation. We hope you enjoyed that.